the big tech's business model is to enable the direct interaction uh, of the very many users that they have. And uh, the essential byproduct of that interaction is the data that they generate. And the data is used as an input uh, into uh, services that uh, rely on the network effects among the users. Uh, that begets more activity, uh, which then generate the data. So we have a full loop uh, that goes from data to the network effects to the activities. It's the DNA, data network activity uh, loop, as we call it. Um, some of the issues have to do with uh, new versions of old problems. For example, if you're uh, worried about uh, financial stability, the, the solvency of institutions and uh, lending standards and so on, they, uh, are, they have traditionally been covered under under banking regulations uh, to do with solvency and with liquidity. Um, and uh, some of these issues um, have been addressed by expanding the, the scope of the regulation so that the same activity is covered by the same rules uh, uh, and thereby leading to a level playing field between existing banks and bank-like uh, activities. But there are also new elements that uh, these big techs have, have, have introduced that uh, have traditionally been the domain of competition authorities and also data privacy authorities as well. We introduced this graphical device called the regulatory compass um, and the, the idea is to map um, each uh, direction in the compass to a particular dimension of policy. So um, the, the conclusion that we draw from this is that uh, um, uh, it's still too early to have a definitive answer of which combination of policies is going to be the best policy, uh, but uh, one thing is uh, certain, which is that uh, the various interactions between financial stability regulations, competition policy, and data privacy regulation have uh, the potential to interact in very complex ways that uh, we may not be able to foresee at the beginning.